Um, but okay, I really want to dive into astral projection. Let's do it. It's so, yes. Okay. It's so <laughs> fascinating for me. Okay. So obviously that's how I discovered you, right. found you when I just, you know, did a little YouTube search and, uh, I, okay. I've experienced astral projection when I have been guided through, are you familiar with yoga nidra? No. Okay. Or also just being in a deep meditative meditative state. But a couple of times in Yoga Nidra, I remember I was about to have my first experience when I was at a meditation teacher training in India. And for whatever reason, I feel like the teacher knew what I was trying to do and stopped it. But long story short, <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I, in my class. he told me to not. He's like, no, don't do astral projection. Do not do like, <laughs> that's not <laughs> <laughs> like, I want my money back. <laughs> um, my rebellious side, whatever. So, <laughs> um, it just I, I, intentionally, it's happened unintentionally, but it hasn't happened intentionally. I tried your steps as well, super close. So, I probably should try again because it takes time. Oh, I'm curious about your astral projection experience and then how you do it, and then some of your experiences as well. Well, well you know i haven't had as much astral projection experience as one might think based on watching my videos i spent a solid two to three years like obsessing over it mm -hmm. and i've probably had um like less than 50 astral projections that's a bit that's still a bit yeah a bit. it's a decent amount for sure but uh, enough to make a video on here's how i do it you know <laughs> But um, life has gotten busy, man, and I haven't had time to even, it takes a, you have to have a lot of time to practice this stuff because, you know, you really need to do it in the early morning after you wake up mm -hmm. and, you know, if you have a job, you can't do that. So it's- I was doing it in the afternoon, so. <clears throat> you can do it in the afternoon too. Um, like nap time, you know, works pretty well. Mm -hmm. But the prime time is usually the waking back to bed method where you get up early, stay awake for like 10 minutes and then go back to sleep and then do the process. Okay. Because if your body hasn't had REM sleep, it really wants REM sleep. And so you'll just kind of nosedive into sleep. Uh, um, whereas to project, you want to get to a certain stage of awareness where the, uh, they call it mind awake, body asleep. Mm -hmm. um, so sort of like if you've ever had that transitionary period of sleeping where you're like, am I awake? Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm aware, but I know I'm kind of sleeping still. Yeah. Like that's the prime stage to project from because essentially your body is the filter that absorbs your consciousness into it. So that's why we project when we sleep because um, sleep shuts down a lot of the uh, cognitive faculties of the body and the mind to where consciousness has a little bit of room to roam around if it wants to. Yeah. Um, because the mind's not working and zinging around like crazy, right? Sleeping. Yeah. So consciousness can sort of step out for a little bit. Um, but it's really hard to stay out of, quote unquote, out of body. Um, mm. It's really difficult because any amount of, like if you get too excited, you'll wake up. Um, if there's a noise, anything that would wake your body up will put you back in your body. So it takes a lot of practice, but you learn how to do it just like anything else. Right. Well, and you have to, in that state, roll over, right? Like you have to try to see if you can roll over or something like that. That's one way. That's okay. what I would always do. Yeah. That makes sense. Kind of like when you're lucid dreaming, you should look down at your hands just to see if you <clears throat> are actually lucid dreaming. Yeah. There's yeah, always there's like little methods. techniques that I like to incorporate when I try to do things. Yeah. Um, but okay. I want to hear about some of your astral projection experiences. <laughs> I get a lot of people that say, hey, make a video about your experiences. Um, and you don't want to for, okay, you don't also, you know what? You don't have to share. You don't want to. Oh, no, no. I'd love to. Okay, cool. I, I just haven't because it's like, there's so many other videos I want to make, you know, but I will oh, at some yeah. point. Wait, pause. Yeah. Speaking of time, you clearly have so little time because you're very dedicated to not only, I mean, you have your job in which you love because it seems like you love fitness and all that but also right. you have your you also have dedicated so much of your time to youtube 
which I can imagine, I, I know it takes a lot of time because my podcast takes a lot of time and then having to do a visual on top of it, I could just, whew, yeah. oh my gosh, I couldn't even imagine. So I just want to honor you for just like really being dedicated to the, this messaging and just what you love to do and your passion. And even though it probably means sacrificing certain things, like it's going to all be worth it. That's just something yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. That's that's not something that a lot of people think about, but yeah, I mean, YouTube takes about 20 hours a week of work on top of working a full-time job. Yeah. Um, so I don't really have any time to do anything <laughs> beyond yeah. that, yeah. Um, but I love it. So it's, it's okay, but um, it's, it's working. My channel's growing. I'm having a great time with it, but uh, people gotcha. don't understand how much work it is. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And that's okay. You're doing you and people will one day, if they don't understand now, they'll, they'll understand. They'll see. Yeah. So you're good. Keep doing yes. what you're doing. Now <laughs> talk about astral projection. <laughs> okay. So, um, one of the more strange experiences I had was, um, I don't know how to make sense out of any of this. Okay. So I'm just going to put that as a caveat, <laughs> but, uh, it's all good. So I had this experience where I went on a body and Sometimes it's so hyper real. It's like you can't even describe it unless you experience it. But there was one of those Looney Tunes ticking clocks that's like, boop, boop, three, two, one, right? And then like the Looney Tunes thing will pop up, right? So yeah. I literally saw in front of me just as real as if an actual movie screen was in front of me, this cartoon ticking clock. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then when the zero hit, it kind of wrinkled open. And I was in this um, sort of like a Pixar animation type of world. And um, there were, you know, humanoid-like beings there. Oh, my God. You were Space Jam. You were Michael Jordan. Yeah, basically. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. I was like Michael Jordan in Space Jam. (laughs) And I was looking around. They were very weirdly shaped and not not superhuman looking, but like, like their nose might've been higher on their forehead or something like weird stuff like that. (laughs) But to them, it was normal. Right. So, um, I'm in this conference room type of setting, kind of like a huge, like, like Tony Robbins conference or something like that, where there's Mm -hmm. like rows of chairs and then a stage up at the front. And there was somebody speaking and I wasn't sure if I was in focus two or focus three. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna test this out. <laughs> focus two or focus three. Yeah. Um, have you seen the, um, the, the science of astral projection video that I have? That's the one that I watched, right? No. I think you watched the first one. I just, I just watched the first one, the viral one. Okay. Okay. So the second one is, um, called the science of astral projection where I kind of explain like the logistics of it. I'm watching that. Yeah. You would love it. You would really love it. <laughs> yes. So um, I talk about how the Frank Keppel model of the astral is focus one through four. Mm -hmm. Um, Robert Monroe famously, you know, the first kind of out of body um, entrepreneur, you could say, he wrote the journeys (laughs) out of the body books. (laughs) He wrote all the first books about it and and made the terms for it and stuff. Yeah. He divided the astral into like 35 focus areas. Mm. And so it got a little bit confusing. So Frank Keppel, this, uh, he was an electrical engineer, a really smart guy, uh, stumbled into astral projection and he was like, I'm gonna simplify this. So I mean, he had like thousands of out-of-body experiences and um, his model was one through four. So focus one is the real time zone, quote unquote, this realm. So if this you project realm, yeah. into your bedroom and you're like looking at your body, oh. you're in focus one. Okay, okay. okay? Uh, and you're in an astral body in focus one. So all of us I've are done in- that many times. Have you? Uh, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Um, yeah, if you're out of body, yeah, in a sense. Oh, but I'm not out of body. I'm still in body. But it's, okay, <clears throat> yeah. never mind. Never mind. There's a difference. There's a difference. But sleep paralysis is really good. It's kind of the Goldilocks zone for projecting. I should do that. Next time. Yeah, next time you're in sleep paralysis, you've got an open doorway to go project wherever you want. Awesome. Good to yeah. know. Okay. That's the stage you want to get to. Um, so we're all in focus one right now, but 
astral projection is when your your astral body, your energy body, or as Ra would say, your pineal gland, uh, indigo ray body, mm -hmm. is in focus one. Mm -hmm. Focus two is the dream world. So it's like your own dimension where only you are there. So every everything you're seeing is a projection of your mind. There's no other entities. Focus three is like the astral planes where actual beings reside and there's universes and life and all kinds of worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then focus four is like sort of like the divine realm. Uh, also plane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's very heavenly. It's bl blissful, ecstasy, all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't sure if I was in focus two or three, meaning I wasn't sure if it was just my own dream or if these were real astral beings in some astral world I had stumbled upon. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But you, when you're in focus two, though, you said that you are alone. You're on your own. Yeah, everything you're so seeing the fact is that your imagination. Okay, so there could still be beings in astral. There could still be it's dream characters. They're figments of the Yes, but it's your okay. mind creating them. So you'll uh, know based on the way you interact with them. Yeah. Uh, a focus two dream being can only interact according to the dream it's in, uh, which is one way you can become lucid. That's one, the first, I think the first lucid dream I had, I was with like three of my dream friends uh, on a, a dock on a lake and I walked a circle around my friends in the dream and my friend's shirt logo went from Nike to Adidas. <laughs> and when I came around, I was like, hey, your shirt just said Nike, but now it says Adidas. And he looked at me with this weird look. Uh, he didn't compute. I was like, you're a dream character. You're not real. Uh, and I started flying around stuff. That's great. Of <laughs> course, your fitness, Nike, Adidas people. Of course, right? Of course. <laughs> so you know, it was my dream. So, <laughs> so I decided to test it out. So there was a row. I was in the very back of like the auditorium. And there's a row of chairs like 10 feet in front of me. So I stretched my arm out like Stretch Armstrong, because you can do that in the astral. Stretch Armstrong? I stretched it out. Do you remember that toy? No. 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 Oh. No. I thought Armstrong. you were just making that up. I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> what a great name. You should coin that as a child story or something. Exactly. Make a oh lot of my money. gosh. No, that was an actual toy. No, I was deprived of this little stretch arm strong that you speak of. Yeah, it's like this buff guy who you could stretch his arms really long and his legs. Uh, super That's popular awesome. Toy. I would have loved that. How old are you? I'm 29. Oh, you're like the same age as me almost. How old are you? 30. Oh, yeah. So we had the same toys. So you just but never. I really or? only like walked around the Barbie aisle. I had oh, way too okay. many. I probably had hundreds of Barbies. Ridiculous. Oh, wow. And Polly Pockets and Sky. Seriously, just the epitome of a pink girl. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> so you did the girl toys, I did the boy toys. Yes. Yes. That makes sense. I actually did, did have, have some G.I. Joes. That was did you have a brother? I did, but he is now 40. He's turning on in a few days, he's going to be turning 48. Oh, he's, wow. Yeah, he's quite a bit older than me. Okay, so you didn't grow up with like seeing the toys he played with? No. So that's why. <laughs> no. And also, I wouldn't want his toys <laughs> from 1972. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever toys they had back then, who knows? Yeah, right. <laughs> if they had it. Yeah. Oh, so kid. I stretched my arm out. I grabbed the top of this one guy's head and turned his head around to look at me. And the look on his face was like this, just like it would, if you did it to a real person, it was like this shock, and horror, and kind of <laughs> agitation. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was looking at him, and he's looking at me, and I, I let go of him. And then the whole, like, people started looking at me, like, turning back, what's going on? And I felt this sense of panic, like, oh, fuck, it's all, it's real place. Oh my so God. I started looking for an exit, and so I slipped out the back door, and people kind of, like, started standing up, like, who was that guy, you know? So I still don't know if that was focus three, but because of that experience, I think it was. I think I projected to a real you know actual. What? You'll but. find out because you're going to do it again and you're going to ask because he's going to come back. The guy but He I can grabbed. also trick you. The guy, yeah. 
Just ask him. Are you, you focus three? No. He's like, what's focus three? Like, you have no concept of that. I know. He's like, I live here. What do you mean? By the way, when you were talking about the story, it was so perfect. The computer would freeze whenever you'd make that funny, like a funny face. Oh, <laughs> <So>. fantastic. <laughs> I'll enjoy that on the replay. <laughs> oh, so great. It was so great. You're welcome, people. Um, You're welcome. Oh, yeah. This is going to be going out on your YouTubes. Yeah. On the YouTubes. On the YouTubes. That's exciting. I want to get back into YouTube. <sighs> but anyways, your astral projection story, that's just one of them. You yes. need to start sharing a lot of them with the YouTubes because they're very fascinating. They're very entertaining. I think they people really like well. them. People like that. Yeah. People I do. think I'll just do it. Maybe I'll get some huge it. viewer count from it and it'll be mm -hmm. worth it. I don't know. <laughs> it, will. it will. You'll get, it will go viral. You'll get a 10,000 more and then you'll be able to share the other stuff, reel them in so you can share all the other stuff. Yes. The universal truths that people might not find so sexy at this time. That's exactly my YouTube strategy though. <laughs> like that's yes. why I make videos about Law, uh, law of attraction, astral yes, projection, yes. the Bible. Like I cast out the widest net possible. Mm -hmm. And then people start watching the other videos, which is what I'm really passionate about, which mm -hmm. is like self-realization and happiness and daily living and peace of mind and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Define happiness. The absence of suffering. Mm, yes. Great Amen. question. <laughs> oh man are you ready for some random fire questions oh yes yes okay okay these are really fun so are you an early bird or a night owl early bird oh yeah what time do you usually wake up well both kind of <laughs> what <laughs> i only sleep five or six hours a night some people can't i know that they say seven to eight but i mean i myself used to be a major insomniac to be honest i'm happy when i get five hours of sleep i am wow i am i'm not happy but it happens a lot <laughs> i'm not i'm not happy so you're I'm suffering a, a little bit that. but <laughs> yeah exactly um, <laughs> uh so you're both that's funny um but what time do, when you do wake up as an early bird what time do you usually wake up usually about six to six thirty Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what is your morning routine like? Uh, wake up, take my dog for a walk. Um, and then I'll make coffee, uh, meditate, and then eat breakfast. Amazing. Um, what kind of style of meditation do you like to do? When's your go-to? Um, I switch it up, but um, I spend usually 20 minutes. Um, sometimes I might do if I, I want to visualize something. Uh, you know, something I want to manifest or something like that. I'll do uh, a pretty intense visualization uh, mm -hmm. meditation, uh, which is almost kind of exhausting when it's done because uh, I work up so much emotion and excitement and stuff. So it's really fun. Uh, but usually I just try to get as still as possible for 20 minutes. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I mix it up yeah. all the time. Sometimes it's just still, sometimes it is visual. And a lot of times it's, music simply just listening to that music but then tuning in right and feeling the sensations um <laughs> <laughs> what is your uh oh wait you got a dog what kind of dog he is a full-bred shih tzu oh oh yeah i saw on one of your insta story highlights you like dedicated an insta story highlight to yep yeah cute. if you haven't seen it go watch it you'll thank me later <laughs> i will leave his uh a username his instagram username in the bio or whatever it's called show notes show notes there we go there we go <laughs> um but you have your instagram profile in private why so uh just because i like to screen certain types of people from you know that's what i thought past experiences <laughs> that's what i thought that is smart um like from, i get a lot of angry religious people yes that will come that's it, yeah. what i would figure i was like you know what that's smart i bet i knew that was the case okay that makes sense yeah. that makes sense so if like I the just, username is like flower child that's just like immediate accept but uh if i'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> if it might be a, a, a angry fundamentalist then i'll click on their page and just see what their bio is. It is if it's like yeah. soldier of god i'm like deny <laughs> yeah very smart very true all right 
the <laughs> that's smart actually that really is um, love you but no exactly i'm gonna send the love to you but also i have the wisdom now to exactly um, there you go. <laughs> I'm fifth density, uh, okay. baby. Yes, fifth density. I think you're pretty 5D. I mean, you potentially might be. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs>